Whoa, the turn by Youngso there. <laughs> Will they know that it is Dong though? So this next B-side is titled Sweet Misery. Welcome to part two if you're watching this from the channel. But for Sweet Misery here, I'm seeing one huge familiar name. One of my top favorite echelon lyricists out there. And that is Choi Yun Kyung. Everyone has worked with the likes of Weekly. Has worked with the likes of EXO and their song Love Shot. Mago by G Friend. With, of course, Red Velvet. Many legendary and incredible incredible groups and artists out there but i'm gonna bring it up here right away because i'm really interested how the lyrics are gonna play out and how this whole song is gonna play out together as a whole Ooh, quite mysterious with it at the start oh my guys i'm already in love with this song what is going on? Like, where are we headed to with this? Okay. The synthesizer work. Wow. Whoa! That's what I'm talking about. Just from the harmonies to the blending of these lush synths is everything. And honestly, it has to be the most distinct song out of the bunch off of this album so far. Very rudimental with the beat. All oh, that roll down. Entertainment. All oh, the synthesizer work. Misery. Sweet memories. Yes. Look at me. Oh my goodness. Bridge. Whoa. Oh my goodness, this bridge is sending here. All these lyrics too. Misery. Sweet memory. There's that like nostalgic kind of feel to it too yet man i love the retro influences from the electronic drum kit work the roll down of that to the lush blending of the synthesizer work to the harmonies amongst the members Okay, I thought someone called me just now, but you know, we got to focus on Sweet Misery because that is the priority here because this song is very distinct amongst the rest and it truly sends you. We're talking about the likes of Key, the likes of Minho on this. Oh my goodness, very lush, dreamlike with it and like it, it, it just, you know, there's a lot of gravitas to this song, you know what I'm trying to say here and like how the lyrics play out is just so on point this is what i'm talking about incredible lyricist she is Choi yun kyung everyone you gotta give it up to her like this is has to be in my top three echelon of b-sides on this album i know i've said this 
so many times within part one of this album review. But this is incredible, this song. This is so, so good. Like, this song's got me on my knees. Like, if I wasn't in a chair right now, you feel me? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this has to be many of your favorites as well. Without a doubt, upon first listen, it gets to you. The hooks do more than its job. The harmonies are everything. But, like, just the blending of the lush synths in this, you don't get that often. You don't get that often in songs these days. A little bit of retro-influenced um, instrumentation, whether that be the roll-down of the electronic drum kit work and all. It is so good, everyone. There's this hazy, sweet misery. Sweet memories it is so memorable upon first listen yet so effective with it oh my goodness everyone i'm definitely gonna have to see a performance of this song if there is one out there because oh my goodness it's so good so rich in sound so lush with it very melodic with it too most importantly Can't deny. The risers here. Sweet misery. See what I'm saying? It doesn't take time to kick off into the song at all. Memories. Very hazy with it. Not too hazy with it, mind you. Sweet. Oh my goodness. You're taking me back down memory lane, Shiny. I am such a sucker for these type of tracks. And I think that's clear today that I am. Love that. Just that bass snare work in the mix. The strumming on our left side of our ears. This song suits Tame In so well, too. Like, it's so him. Sweet memories. There's that sing along vocal factor. Ooh. Yeah. That analog synthesizer work is very prominent. Bridge. Yeah, man. Oh, take it off. You know, take us to somewhere special. This is crazy. There's a rash there. Sweet misery. Oh my goodness. I can't handle this. Like, and the chorus. This is a die for. Like, come on. They left nothing out of this. At this point, I just want to enjoy the rest of the song here, guys. Not gonna lie. And ends it off so perfectly. Let's go, everyone. Sweet Misery is that song for me. Without a doubt, guaranteed to be in my top three echelon. And it's really got me reminiscent on, like, their past recent eras by them in the past before you feel me like this is totally something that you know would be released in their previous album or even the album before like it's something that i'm such a sucker for that chani does really really well whether that be the vocal blending the blending of synthesizer uh work some retro elements and just got you so reminiscent of things and such so it's just very powerful in that kind of um level of lyricism coming from Choi Yun Kyung but also just the weight 
and delivery that Shani provides and carries out and presents within this particular song. Because I feel like for those who are familiar at, with Shiny as much as I am, or even more familiar like the since the day one dot, you know what I'm saying right here in the thick of things for Sweet Miseria. The fact that like we get into verse one and then we get we get into verse one right away. There's no intro. We get into the pre-chorus, very brief and effective with it, and then boom, we get that prolonged, hazy chorus, which, mind you, it's only hazy during the sweet misery and the sweet memories to add, like, you know, different kind of contrast in that moment within the chorus. And then the post-chorus, the, ah, yeah, I think I need your, ah, so good, everyone, so smooth with it between the sections, and then we get sent with that bridge everyone you gotta give it to shiny for sweet misery and everyone behind the scenes for this particular track but let's just get into the next song now so this next song is titled insomnia now i'm seeing one familiar name actually a two we have josh come be yet again on the composition side of things but in terms of the lyrics we have kim and hyung from jam factory we love to see it very familiar collective but she has worked on the likes of blue flame sour grapes and even no celestial by La Seraphim and many of our favorite artists and groups out there. So I'm going to bring up Insomnia here, see what's all about. I'm sensing this could be very dreamy, maybe more so hazy or moodier side of things, just solely based on the titling of this song being called Insomnia, but let's go. Oh yeah, I can already sense it here. It's like automatically more moodier than the other tracks. Whoa, this is verse one though, quite surprising how it's being done here. <laughs> Wow, very unexpected how the delivery is done here in this verse 1. And it's quite the long verse 1 so far. Wow, that bass line pops. It's that bass, wow. I love it. Wow, this track really allows them to stretch their vocals. Some jazz, jazzy chords being played here. Nice percussion work. Great piano, keyboard work, I should say. Picking up the hi -hats. There we go. There's that bass line that's popping. I love it. It's a huge highlight to this song, I've got to admit, for me. Wow. Like, quite admittedly, I don't mess with the verses that much. But when it comes to the chorus, I love it how they get to flex and stretch their vocals in the song. With the jazzy chords on the keyboard being played. To that poppy bass work. There's that jazzy keyboard work that I was talking about. Wow. Like, it's not necessarily slow burn by any means. 
But I love the how the there's like some falsetto moments in this song too. Like melodic falsetto moments. Again. See what I'm saying? Wow, quite the surprising track with the verses. I've got to admit, the verses would have to grow on me quite admittedly in how it plays out, especially that verse one. Like, it's very surprising. But I feel like longevity-wise, it's going to surprise me with more and more listens. It's that late night, you know, cafe, not necessarily coffee house feel to it, but it's definitely like that. You know, they get to flex their vocals, they get to stretch their vocals a lot and all. And yeah, I feel I feel like just, you know, pretty much verse one, verse two, I got to get used to, especially verse one, how it's, you know, quite jarring with it, not overbearingly overwhelming jarring with it, but I mess with it. So I'm actually going to bring it up here, break down my favorite moments that I liked in this song, actually uh, quite like, let me point out those moments. Like, this was really shocking with it, and just how... I didn't expect this kind of flow at the beginning, but I guess it captures your attention right away. And just how the popping of that bass goes. Oh my goodness, very prominent with it. With these jazzy keyboard chords. Bit of tambourine clinging and clanging with the percussion work and i love it you know just that keyboard work in the back i do mess with verse two more than verse one quite admittedly and see what i'm saying when it comes to the falsetto work quite another highlightable moment that i love in this song one of my other favorite parts in the song good night see and i'm saying how they're stretching these lines and vocals Ooh, how that notes held there We got some chime work earlier on there. Pretty good song, not gonna lie, you know. It, it it comes in later on into the album, which is quite surprising in terms of like how these tracks are laid out. Like, because quite admittedly, I feel like 10X could have been laid out later on in this album. Just the direction of this album is quite surprising in how these tracks are laid out, but you know, Insomnia is that song that I can enjoy here and there, but it might be on repeat late at night, especially later tonight at, when I have a closing uh, shift because it's that nice song to enjoy at night, you know, on a late night ride and all. I'm definitely going to test it out at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., you name it, y'all. So this was a nice, pleasant song. Love the stretching of the vocals. Most importantly that bass work the falsetto work and just how they get to stretch their vocals but let's just get into the final track i believe and then i'll wrap things up with my concluding thoughts now so this final song is titled gravity i'm seeing prominent names here the likes of ludwig lindell who has worked with many of our favorite sm artists i mentioned uh choi ji Yun earlier in this album review and none other than juni on the composing side of things for those who are familiar on this channel, we support Juni all the way. I was fortunate enough to attend one of his concerts and all incredible individual and solo artists and songwriter, you name it, and all. So I'm going to bring up Gravity here. I'm sure I'm going to more than enjoy this particular song, everyone. So let's just do that right away here. Bring it up and let's go. Now it is the final track, so... It could be slower in tempo, yeah. 
All the snapping here. With the moon and earth, I circle around you, even if you push me. Mm. Wow, these lyrics, though. Aww. Love the keys being played here. At the end of day, somewhere, this time I'm left alone. I'm being led to you. Wow. Truly talking about a significant other one. Even if I get lost, I come back. Oh, this verse. Warmly wrapped in your warmth. Like, this is either for... Either the fans, which I, I think it's not necessarily like this is a very prominent individual. Mm. Wow. Very simple chorus, but so effective with the intentions of it due to the lyricism in the song. Finally. Wow. You can push me, just put it's like a significant other one, or I've got to admit, quite possibly, Dungyan, everyone. Like, I don't want to make assumptions here. If you guys can really let me know in the comment section down below, that would be much appreciated. Seems to be with you. Don't get me into this weird music after that. Oh my goodness, Gravity. What a way to wrap up this album, but the more and more I look at the lyrics, the more I listen to the emotional weight and that's being carried from the members themselves. You mind Gravity, right? End of the day, you and I, this is not specifically for the fans, this is more so specifically for another significant individual and all and um you know more so of like at the end of earth and all i get it you know i really get what this song's putting down in terms of the intention someone prominence in your life and someone who's significant who's been throughout your life and also gotta thank shiny for putting out a special song like this um I can sense totally like Ludwig Lindell's influence on this song, Hoji Yun, of course, and especially Juni within uh, this. Um, for the songs that he has taken part on, he has worked with quite a bit of SM artists to date and all. So I really sense it knowing how he is within his songs and for other people's uh, songs and all. So such an amazing, uh, beautiful uh, song every uh, one yet you know it doesn't have to be so intricate with it due to the intentions in this song I've got to admit so I'm gonna bring it up here yet again try to cut it off before the weird moment and uh, then wrap up my final thoughts for this album <laughs> I can't sleep. I keep thinking of you. It's empty somehow. Like these lines here, like the moon and earth, I circle around you. Even if you push me, I could feel the traction. Ooh. 
I love that looping that's going on. Minho, he really suits this song too. You're in my blue. Sometimes quietly the blue night rush to me locked up at night and all. This is the most prominent line that really stood out to me by Onu. At the end of the day, somewhere this time I'm left alone. I'm being led to you. You are my. Beautiful setup in the song with this line here. Very significant line. Gravity. Not too slow in tempo, not too upbeat with it. This feelings cannot deny and all. Yeah, like all these lyrics really point at a significant other one. I search for you endlessly. You can push me, just put me Beautiful song. Gravity, gravity. Oh, and the vocal moments and flourishes, vocal flourishes that we get inside this song too. Yeah, no, enough of that weird music. But Gravity, what a way to wrap up this album, everyone. Hard, the eighth full album by Shiny. Where did I even begin with this song? Or this album, sorry. 10X, those jazzy undertones. Loved that song. Satellite, definitely in my top two echelon of B-sides. I think my top two, like, it has to be Identity. And Satellite is tied with Sweet Misery, without a doubt. Um... And then I would have to go with, mm, I think I would have to go with the fourth one because since Satellite and Sweet Misery are, are tied there for the third one, we got Like It and I would have to go to like uh, 10X Gravity. And then the last B side uh, going into place there would be Insomnia for me. I think the feeling is way up there for sure, without a doubt. Uh, I slightly like juice more than hard because you guys have seen my preference in songs melodic powerful uh, melodic choruses and all uh dramatic moments that shiny adds in their uh songs so i love how we get different sides of shiny within this whether it's throwback whether it's more so retro influenced whether it's more funk based whether it's more jazzy whether it's more so moody for insomnia whether it's more so modern influenced with hard and juice specifically so i think this album is a masterpiece it's not necessarily my favorite album to date by shiny mind you knowing how they're incredible this how incredible their discography is already is but yeah i think the top four or top three is definitely identity then it goes satellite tied with um of course sweet misery and then yeah like it those would be my favorites let me know your favorites in the comment section down below i feel like there were great beautiful lyrics in this whole album and especially within gravity so let me know some of your confirmations in terms of gravity or if you agreed with some sort of my sentiments or statements that i said in this first listen and album review the shinies of course eight full album hard take care as always this has been garrison thank you for the wait everyone Take care and peace.